everybody. Saturday night. Welcome to the Jonathan Ross Show. And I'm excited to show you who's in the green room this evening. What a lineup we've got for you tonight. From the X Factor, we have my three favourite judges. You've just seen them at work. It's Gary Barlow, Louis Walsh, and Nico Scherzinger, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Gorgeous. One of them, gorgeous. <laughs> Between them, they've made more people cry than the onion, waxing and nipple clamp industries put together. <laughs> Sticking with music, we have Britain's biggest selling channel. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Mr Alfie Bow. <laughs> hey, Alfie, how are you? Looking good. Also on the show, he co-wrote The Office, he co-wrote and starred in Extras. He's a stand-up, basically he's six foot seven of funny. It's Mr Stephen Merchant, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> six foot seven of funny. <laughs> and I can see from that reaction, you like him tall and skinny. Well, we've got tall and skinny for you. She's the supermodel, supermodel, the queen of the catwalk. Naomi Campbell is here, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> wow, look at Naomi. Oh, Naomi, you look beautiful, of course. Lovely to have you here. And we also have music tonight, some great music during the show for one of the most exciting young talents on the planet. Ladies and gentlemen, Laura Mvula. <laughs> and you look great as well. How lovely to have you here. That's a packed show. Uh, now, I make a big deal of Halloween. Me and my family make a big deal of Halloween every year in our house. So I thought I'd bring you a little something from home to show you because I was excited when I found this. This is something that I actually genuinely grew in my garden. OK, here it is. Have a look at that. Look at the size of that. <laughs> Not, not Louis Walsh, the pumpkin. <laughs> okay. uh, but that's not just a plain pumpkin, it's Halloween, so obviously we've had a little bit of work done. Uh, it's had a nip and a tuck, a little bit carved off. Louis knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> 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 because this is the biggest Halloween pumpkin I've ever grown, I also want it to be the scariest, so this is what we've done to it. Brace yourselves, this is terrifying. <laughs> Carved into it. And that was easier to make it look like him because it's already got the same skin colour. Okay? <laughs> Talking of heads, we all know about selfies. You all know about taking a selfie, I'm sure. The new craze in town is the cheeky. Celebrities taking photos of their backsides, their behinds, and post them on the web. But anyway, Cheryl Cole started it. This was hers. That's showing off the new tattoo. Lovely backside, although I believe she now has a terrible problem with Greenfly. <laughs> and she has to prune it every February. Then. <laughs> Then Kim Kardashian posted this cheeky of herself. That's instantly recognisable. Her behind is so famous, she can use that as her passport photo. OK? <laughs> uh, Louis, have you ever taken a cheeky of yourself? No. No, I haven't. Gary, you haven't? I don't think so. If I say I haven't, someone will find one where I have, but I don't think so. Maybe we found one already, Gary. Hello. <laughs> oh. Look at that! Look. <laughs> wow. Man, that was a great episode of Countdown, wasn't it? Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get my first guest out. Ladies and gentlemen, please go crazy for Nicole Scherzinger, Louis Walsh and Gary Barlow. <laughs> Looking good. Come on, come and sit down. Take a seat. Wow. Wow. <laughs> let's talk about the expert to start with and then talk about you in, in individually, perhaps. Uh, you've got, let's say, now, Gary, you've got the groups. Yep. OK, Nicole, you've got the girls. Yes. And Louis, you've got... Boys. You've won in the past, haven't you? Yeah, second season, yeah. Nicole, you've won in the past. Yeah. You last, had Shane, didn't you? Last year, yeah. You won with James Arthur. <laughs> yeah. Gary. <laughs> I'm just trying to remember. Have you had any luck? Not yet. OK. <laughs> this could be... Well, this could be Gary's year. This no. could be your year. Could no. be. No, 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 no. I don't think so. You don't think so? I don't think so. Why not? Who do you think's going to win? I think I've got the win. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I really do. I think it's between me and Sharon. Really? And me. <laughs> no, no. no. That's last year's winner. Uh, who do you think you've got that's going to romp to victory? 
Honestly, mm. a little guy from Scotland called Nicholas. OK. Do we have I, think, yeah. I, I think he's the one. Okay. Uh, you mentioned Sharon. She's kind of doing it on both sides of the Atlantic. You were telling me she's she is, yeah. Yeah. She does a show in LA every day called The Talk. So she leaves on a Monday and she films, then she comes back well, in. Well, that maybe explains why she's kind of occasionally... She's, um... A bit crazy? Yeah. <laughs> she's a little... She seems a little <laughs> on edge occasionally. Yeah, but she, come on, she's getting old. <laughs> <laughs> I told her she was like Judge Judy last week. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Well, imagine, though, she must be more restrained when you're out with her socially. No. She's worse. Yeah, she's, she's exactly the same. Worse. How could she be worse than that? She's worse. What does she Jonathan, do? Jonathan, she does a lot of things. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I remember I was out with her once in L.A. and she kind of took them out. Wow. Mm -hmm. What, your breasts? No, she her. Took <laughs> no, her. She took them out. But she's great fun. Barrels we love her. Fun. We yeah. absolutely love her. Well, yeah, I mean, I know uh, last series there was tension on the judging panel. There was tension. There were a couple of moments between you and Talisa, and there, it was kind of like... Um, the on the one hand, there's going to be some tension, I guess, because you're in competition. But at the same time, there were moments where you got the feeling it wasn't as happy a ship as perhaps it might have been. No, it was. No, no question about it. I felt like last year got just too competitive to the point where it was actually distracting from the artists. So it's a much nicer uh, atmosphere around the studio. I think, I think, in general, everybody's happier this year. There's a lot of tears on the show, um, not somebody from the contestants as you guys. You've, I've seen you've crying on it. Yeah, once or twice, yeah. Cry. Once or twice. Nico, you cry quite easily. Yeah, every once in a while. Well, that's sweet, that's nice. <laughs> but, <laughs> Gary, I've never seen you even <laughs> show even a flicker of emotion. You're like the one out of Terminator 2, you know, the one who just keeps coming. What's it, it going to take? Do you yeah. feel the inside of them moments where you just... Why is there no... Do does it not come out like I that? do, yeah. No, I, I don't cry easily anyway. I really don't. It takes a child to be born or something to make me cry. <laughs> um, but um, I, I, I do feel it inside, especially when you're at judges' houses and things and you're sat one-on-one -on -one with the person. And like you say, th these moments, they're going to change these people's lives. And you're aware of that and you're trying to use a responsible decision to make sure you're putting through the right ones, but it is, it's very, very tough. And so you don't cry at home, you don't cry during movies? Um, no, I don't. I do, I'm a hot mess. I cry <laughs> during, like, Finding Nemo, anything. Yeah. I just, I have to, yeah, I'm gonna cry right now. Theatre. <laughs> you cry, you cry at theatre? I always fill up a little bit at the theatre. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some of those plays are long camp. and boring, aren't they? <laughs> go a bit, what? Let's see you camp again there. What yeah, was that? Yeah, I do. I go, I'm watching. And do, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I got the theatre. You got the jazz hand there yeah. as well. I love like the theatre. Yeah. Um, so, you guys, so you're, you're obviously you are, you seem friends. You do we seem are like genuinely good, really good friends. This uh, and, Nicole, you're kind of, I guess, <laughs> do you get looked after by them? Because this still isn't your country as such. So, I guess when you're over here, it must still be strange for you in some ways. No, they take good care of me here. You know, they just taught me about a sausage roll the other day. <laughs> they take great care of me. Well, they really are spoiling you. I know. <laughs> Hi, yeah. So, what, you hadn't rolls. had a sausage roll before? I'd never had one. I heard Gaz talk about it. My contestant, um, Hannah. She worked at Greg's. Oh, wow. oh we have some Greg's they, out there. Uh, how did they build up Greg's to you? How did they, did they tell you? Well, Gaz over here, he's like, he loves all the finest things in life. So whatever he orders to his dressing room, I'll be like, whatever Gary has, that's what I want. <laughs> so he said the sausage rolls are delicious, okay? And then it's like, my girlfriends are in town from LA and I was like, girls, y'all need to come back from Buckingham Palace because we are going to have a real treat today, I'm telling you. <laughs> it is, uh, we're going to an authentic, <laughs> official English bakery. They're gonna, there's gonna be little, you know, English people making things for us. What, so uh, what did you think it would be, be like? You thought it That's would be like? That's what I thought it would be like. Like little, a palace almost, little, or like a, an old-fashioned kitchen? Miniature, yeah, an old-fashioned kitchen, and just like you walk in, you're like, mmm, it's freshly baked, it's beautiful. <laughs> and I didn't realize it was a chain. Like, there's you know, oh, I know, yes, I know yeah. this morning. <laughs> <laughs> but it was yummy. And look, all of us men of a certain age, Louis, you know as well, we've been big, we've been small. Gary, you were much bigger. Now, look at you, you couldn't be trimmer, he couldn't be in better shape. Could he, ladies and gentlemen? You. <laughs> you look great, and you have done for the last few years. I can't imagine you eat a lot of sausage rolls, do you? No. You must be, he must be kind of I health conscious. I only dream about them now. <laughs> That's it. Gaz is really fit. I can actually drink him under the table. But that's okay. only because he doesn't eat much. He has, like, soup and a gust of wind every once in a while. Okay. <laughs> okay. Did you have a dream about a Twix bar? Yes. <laughs> no. I was, doing, I was doing a detox, and um, 
and it, and it was just raw vegetables all day, yeah. all day, and water. And I honestly woke up in the middle of that. I dreamt I'd fallen asleep on a Twix bar. <laughs> <laughs> I was rubbing my face on it. Oh, it was so nice. <laughs> <laughs> And do you allow yourself a treat like that every so often? I do. Yeah, I do. Louis, you are, don't take this wrong, the oldest member of the panel. Definitely. Okay. Well, you're older than Sharon? In around the same age. It's hard to tell how old she is now. <laughs> <laughs> She's like Doctor Who. She just keeps coming back with an entirely different face. I believe Peter Capaldi is playing her in the next series of The x Factor. <laughs> um, you've been uh, on the judging panel the longest. You've done Ten more. Years. Yeah, more than anyone else. Ten more than years. Carol, more than anyone. Yeah. Wow. So, uh, good? Uh, yeah. But you must, obviously, must love doing it. Yes, it's the best job in the world when it's good. But I've read that you're going to stop after this. this well, I said I was. Mm -hmm. But I'm having so much fun this year, I might stay. We never know. I'm, a, I'm on the year-to-year -year contract, so you never know. Do you say early on, I might, I'm leaving next year, so that if you go, if Carol gives you the chop, you go, well, I was going anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a little bit of that. Because you always start saying this about next year, but I'm having so much fun. A little bit of that. We're genuinely having a lot of fun okay. this year. But, yeah. Gary, you are leaving yes. after this, aren't you? You're going back to doing what you... Yeah, I, well, my, I always say my first job is I'm, I'm, a, I'm a member of Take That, so I'm going back to the band next year. So... Thank you. So trying to fit the two in, it's not. It's so you're not but you're still doing solo stuff in between now, then. I am. Uh, yes. So take that. You'll have a new take that album, will you? New take that album next year. Uh, yeah. Have you started writing that already? Not yet. Okay. Yeah. We're well, starting the new year. Um, you know, you've been doing this show for ten years, Louis. Yeah. But this is not, of course, the first talent show you've been involved in. I did Pop Stars the Rivals, yeah. And even before that. Oh no! What have you got? Hey. <laughs> oh good. I'm oh gonna, Gary, you're, Gary, Gary, you're going to enjoy this. No. <laughs> Have this, I got is, big hair? this is the show that oh, was called no. uh, SBB Talent oh, Show no. Contest. <laughs> oh, no. it, was, uh, it was kind of the Irish. X Factor of its day, only in Ireland. And television moved at a slower pace back then. Here's uh, Louis Walsh back in 1983. Kendall's Mark on the tag, Louis Walsh. Could we have your marks, please, Louis? OK. Uh, contestant A, street level, 13 marks. Contestant F, Skabrak, 16 marks. And contestant F, Skabrak, 16, Louis, was it? Yeah. 16. 16. Okay. Wow. Now. Can we get that? You like that? Um, uh, so that was. You were giving marks at a 20, I guess, were I you? I think so, the 20. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I love the pace of it because the way that show worked, he would go, I'm going to speak to Louis Walsh now. Louis Walsh, how many points first? And you go, Ski Brack, 16 points. You go, Ski Brack, 16 points. And another way it went, Ski Brack, 16 points. And then, so you, and they did that for every act with every one of the four judges. I mean, that whole part, just the judging part, the giving the scores, was about three hours long. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so next series, then, there'll be uh, two free seats on the judging panel. Well, I think Simon's going to come back. That's the rumor. You think, or you know? That's the rumor. We never know. What do you think? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you and Simon would work well. No, he's scared of me. Is he? Yeah, he's scared of me. No, you're scared of him. Everyone's scared of Simon. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, uh, how surprised, how excited were you when you heard that he was going to be a father? I was surprised. <laughs> I really was surprised. Uh, were you? <laughs> <laughs> no. I was surprised. <laughs> What is there to be surprised about? Um, <laughs> but uh, he's going to be a good dad? He, uh, has he talked to any of you about advice? I mean, Gary, you are clearly a lovely doting father. Has he asked <laughs> you for any tips? Um, no, but, you know, I've got, I've got friends who we, we said, what are these two going to be like when they're mums and dads, you know? And they do. You have kids and you become a, a, a great parent. That's just what happens. I think he'll be no different than anybody else. Yeah, yeah. Do you think he'll uh, be honest with the child like he is with the people on the show? Do you think? <laughs> I mean, cos I wouldn't want to be that kid bringing my homework home to Simon Cowell, would you? This is frankly shit. <laughs> 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 All right, uh, look, lovely seeing you again. And we'll thank hopefully you. see you on later on the show. Ladies and gentlemen, will you say thank you with me to Louis, fabulous Gary, and the gorgeous Nicole Scherzinger. Yeah. Uh, still to come on the show, Naomi Campbell is here, Alfie Bowen, Stephen Merchant, so join me after the break. <laughs> Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get my next guest right out. He went from cleaning cars to a multi-platinum selling music career in the blink of an eye. It is our very own Mr Alfie Bow, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> How 
are you? Happy? Looking good? I'm good, thank you. Yeah. Uh, you know, he, you. what a remarkable story. So you're you're, you're working like you're just a regular guy, and suddenly you have you have a big career in opera. Yeah. Yeah. That, but you weren't actually an opera fan, were you? Is that right? Um, no, I wasn't. No. So how um, does that happen? Then? How does someone who isn't really into opera become well, an opera star? My my father used to play a lot of different types of music around the house, so I, I grew up listening to opera to blues to rock and roll to f country music and all that so I, I just discovered that opera was the way that my voice should go and so you had the right voice for it yeah. so who told you that who uh, how did you know that you just found you were more comfortable singing that or other people said that you should sing that um, well i started around the house i started impersonating people like pavarotti which is pretty stupid because he's good and i wasn't how old were you then 14. Um, so, but you weren't yeah. a big fella. No, you I, wasn't, I wasn't massive. No, no. no. But, but I, I could sing high notes pretty loud. I can't imagine there were that many 14-year-olds in Lancashire running around imitating Pavarotti at 14. No, I know, I know. <laughs> well, I didn't tell anyone because I'd have my face smashed in. The <laughs> <laughs> uh, OK, oh, so, so now you have the, the family, the kids, and do they yeah. like listening to you? Do they find Dad's opera singing, or would they rather my, listen to more? My little girl says it's too loud. She always says, like, stop singing, Daddy, you're making a fool of yourself, it's too loud, you know? <laughs> and, the school that she's going to has asked me to um, sing at their Christmas carol concert, you know. But um, my, my daughter won't let me. She said it's too embarrassing. <laughs> How old is she? She's uh, five now. <laughs> well, that's and the age when Danny's over, I think. Now, you've got a new album out, and this album is an opera, so I'm assuming this is the more the kind of music you would listen to, is that right? Yeah, well, I've, I've had the fortunate chances of, of singing with some fantastic people in my career. I've sung with... Bryn Terfel, Jose Carreras, Rene Fleming, you know, Robert Plant, Alice Cooper, wow. Bruce Dickinson from Iron Maiden. It's like, I've, I've had all, this, all these chances. That's an eclectic the... group. It is, well, yeah, yeah, but I don't see any difference between, between them. You know, I don't... I could give you an example of, of, the, of the styles of singing. I don't, I don't change the way I sing in any okay, particular way. OK, so say you were way. singing a Led Zepp song. Yeah. Would you not have to sing that differently <clears throat> to singing a piece of opera? No, I could... No, I can demonstrate it for you if you okay. want. Well, let's have a little time. Yeah, that'd be nice. Uh, I can... <laughs> well, for example, um, uh, if you uh, if you're singing like the last notes of Ness and Dorma, you know the big Vincero. Oh, thing, I know uh, those yeah, last yeah. few notes, don't we all? <laughs> I think we've all been there in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> well, the last big note is the sort of that's the sort of place you would sing like the start of rock and roll by. Led Could we have the start of Rock and Roll with Led Zeppelin? Okay. <clears throat> it's been a long time since I rock and roll. Wow, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's pretty good. And uh, <laughs> let's hear. Could we hear a little bit of Ness and Dorma? <laughs> so we remember this is yeah, the same okay. thing. Alan Balvin Chero. Vincero, Vincero. Wow. 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 How about that? Although, <laughs> I have to say this, Daddy, that was a bit too loud. Was it a bit loud? Like <laughs> <laughs> that is loud, though. I mean, man, I'm sitting, well, that was pretty loud over there. But I, my ears were ringing, so in the car, that must drive your kid it nuts. It does, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's usually in the car, I get told to shut up. Hey, I really enjoyed the album. I was listening Thank to you. it. I got sent a copy of the release. And some of my favourite tracks on this. Well, that's talking about performing with people as well. I mean, the, the band themselves on this album were incredible. I mean, I got to play, we got to do all these tracks with Booker T from... So Book Booker T from Booker T and the MGs is on this album. Yeah, wow, that yeah, must be so yeah. exciting for it you. It was incredible. Uh, Great guys. We got a little bit of ET. Uh, the album's Trust by Alfie Bowie. It's out November the 11th. It's got some <coughs> fabulous tracks on it. Here's a little taste of one. When the spring, summer or fall All you gotta do is call And I'll be there Right there. So I guess we've got people got to know you best when you're performing in Les, Les Miserables. Les Miserables. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then the movie. The came movie out. that I wasn't in. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I was. And, uh, 
<laughs> but this happens a lot, doesn't it? You have someone who makes a role their own on stage and they yeah. often don't get cast in the film because yeah. they want a, a movie star name. Whoa, that's a terrible picture. <laughs> <laughs> that's what Louis Walsh looks like in the morning. <laughs> uh, did you audition for the movie? Um, I did, yeah, yeah. I, I auditioned for it and um, I had a, my audition was about two and a half hours long. Wow. So I sang the whole of the show, did the dialogue and all that sort of business. But then I was walking out of the room and I said to the guy that was going in after me, I said, good luck, mate, you know, it's uh, all the best. And uh, it's Hugh Jackman. So I thought, <laughs> nah, that was a waste of two and a half hours, wasn't it, really? <laughs> well, you never know for sure. But, yeah, I mean, yeah. having said that, you know, he was very much Hugh Jackman. He was good in the role as well. Yeah, I mean, have you yeah. seen the movie? Did well, you answer? Yeah, I did, actually. No, um, uh, Hugh Jackman was, was great in it, yeah. yeah. So when you first came out of the I wasn't bitter at all about losing out to Hugh Jackman. No. Well, if I'm not getting him to the movies, cos, you know, I, I can sleep at night still, I'm all right. I'm but all right. if you're going to lose I out... I didn't hate him, you know, it wasn't a big problem yeah. at all. <laughs> <laughs> so... It wasn't a big deal, OK? <laughs> <laughs> you still watch the Wolverine movies yeah, occasionally. Yeah, uh, but I'm you know, auditioning for that. <laughs> <laughs> if you are going to lose out to someone, lose out to exactly, Hugh Jackman. Exactly. You know? Um, uh, I never, saw, I never saw Lemmy is Life. Everyone said, saw, no. everyone said, everyone used to cry in the audience. There was always a big reaction on that. Was there the a movie's point... good? <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry. Was there a point where you knew uh, you had the crowd? Was there always a certain point in the music itself when you knew you had them? Play, uh, getting past the last note of Bring Him Home was always a, a bit of a milestone for me. So when I did it in front of like twenty thousand people at the O2, it was, it was that was the telling point. Could we have a little <clears throat> bit of that? Song? Of Les Miserables, yeah. yeah. Yeah, if you want, yeah. <clears throat> and could you do that thing at the end where you schnick and your claws come out? Because <laughs> 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 that's, that's what people like about that musical. <laughs> You're a bastard. <laughs> um, you can take, you can give. Let him be, let him live. If I die, let me die. Let him live. Bring him home. Bring him home. Bring if we finally managed to make Gary cry. Gary, any emotion? Yes! <laughs> yes! I knew you could do it. Hey, it was great having you here and great hearing you sing. Ladies and gentlemen, the fabulous Mr Alfie Bow! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Alfie. That was great. Thank you so much. Still to come after the break, one of the funniest men in the country, Mr Stephen Merton and the stunning Sid Mould, my only Campbell, so don't go anywhere. <laughs> Welcome back. Alfie was great, wasn't he, ladies and gentlemen? He was terrific. <laughs> Let's have our next guest out. He wrote the truly remarkable office. Uh, it's a sitcom which I think all other sitcoms are now measured against. He's now conquering America with his own brilliant new sitcom. It is Mr Stephen Merchant, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Here we are. This wow. is it. The big time. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good to see you. Welcome back to the UK. Thank you for having me, yes. You've yes. been away. You've been filming in America. You've been living in America as well, yes. is that right? How was it coming back to England from Los Angeles for you? Um, well, I don't want to say miserable, but um, <laughs> it, I, I got off the plane and within 24 hours I had a cold. Wow. Streaming cold. I didn't wow. have a cold for six months in LA. Wow. I don't know if you've been over there, but the weather's wonderful. <laughs> well, it is lovely, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's surprising how seductive that is. You're out there filming Hello, Ladies. It's your new sitcom. It's on Sky Atlantic Wednesday nights, uh, and it's kind of... It's not a reality show, but there are elements of your life in it. Is this right? right. Well, it's a character... Um, it's, it's a guy called Stuart, and he's uh, a nerdy, six-foot-seven, West Country uh, loser. Um, 
but he's a web designer, so it's uh, it's a big departure <laughs> for me. Um, <laughs> and uh, no, no, it's, it, I mean, it's, it, it's, it was based on my stand-up. My stand-up show was called Hello Ladies and was about my fairly unsuccessful love yeah. life. And so I did the show in LA, and, and, and HBO said, do you want to do it as a sitcom? And so, um, and so that's what happened. So you've had you had trouble over the years meeting girls, holding on to relationships. What's been the problem for you, Stephen? What's been the problem? I mean, there's so many problems. <laughs> like, maybe I'm picking the wrong girls, or I've set my ambitions too high. Maybe, because yeah. um, I've I, you know I, I get rejected now in LA by by really beautiful women. It's incredible. <laughs> no, honestly, like I, the caliber of the women that are turning me down is I've been turned down by some stunners. <laughs> and um, <laughs> this is a good example of my lack of cool. Right? I. You won't believe this story. You'll think I've made this up for the show. I swear this is true. I was in Los Angeles a couple of weeks back, uh, about a month and a half ago, and I, was, I went to a party uh, that was thrown by the comedian Sarah Silverman. Oh, I know. Right? I thought, yeah. And it was very good. It was like 200 people there, a lot of comedians and a lot of actors and stuff. But the thing with comedians, as you know, you don't want to embarrass yourself in front of comedians mm -hmm. because they will never let you forget. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was a little bit jumpy about that because I was, again, trying too hard, trying to be cool. And, um, and I was there, and someone said, Steve, do you want some chocolate? And, you know, in England, if someone offers you some chocolate, it's probably some chocolate. Yeah. In California, where marijuana is legalised... Wow. ..you can find it in the chocolate. <laughs> didn't realise, didn't realise. So he was actually offering you a chocolate laced with marijuana? Laced with marijuana. It's one square of chocolate. Now, I, I popped the chocolate. I was fine for 48 seconds. <laughs> and then I went into a hole from which I could not escape. It was <laughs> mental. I was just... It was like I was inside treacle, just, like, peering out, trying to sort of stay normal <laughs> and have conversations. <laughs> Hello. Who are you? Ben Affleck. Nice to meet you, mate. Yeah. <laughs> what? So I, I went in the bathroom, and this is what you want to do when you've accidentally taken drugs. You want to stare at yourself in a mirror. <laughs> Indefinitely. That helps. <laughs> and I was looking into my soul <laughs> and couldn't... Nothing was making any sense. And I went back out to the party and I thought, I'll get a breath of fresh air, this will sort me out. Yeah, that will clear your head. And I went to the outside area and the route took me straight through an eight-foot plate glass window <laughs> that shattered in its entirety. Mm. The whole thing exploded. Just glass everywhere. Wow. Suddenly, I, now I'm outside of the party, looking back in... <laughs> ..at, like, 200 people, many of them comedians. <laughs> they were just thinking, is he injured? Can we take a picture yet? What are the rules? <laughs> and there's no precedent for that. Like, it's not like you're raised and your mum goes, if you ever walk through a window on drugs... You know what I mean? This is what to do. Just discreetly so you seriously, exit. you smashed this window in this woman's house? I, I brought a picture for you cos I knew I would need evidence to prove Tell this. This is the aftermath. Have we got that photo? There's the aftermath of it. There. Wow. <laughs> Now, here's the... And, and on the other side, you appear to have shrunk and changed your clothes. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is... This, is this, this summarises Hollywood for you, because there's 200 people at this uh, party, <laughs> but they had to bring in a cleaning lady. Not one of them could get a broom <laughs> at 2 a.m. So I can see why in that party you wouldn't have got lucky with someone. Then I... Yeah, it was <laughs> bizarre. Let's have a look at a clip. <laughs> the, uh, the show draws on those kind of experiences. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, it's Wednesday, 10 p.m. on Sky Atlantic. Have a look at it. It's a very funny show. This is a very funny clip. Look at this. Yes, ask around. A smoothie, a carrot juice. Oh, Annie, sorry. Can I ask you a question? A quick question. Uh huh. Which is um. <laughs> stupid. Stupid. That was silly. That was. <laughs> My little, um, my little sort of homage to Del Boy. <laughs> well, it's a, hat, it's a great know. moment. Hey, OK, I just thought something good. How are your lines? How are your opening lines with women? How are they... Terrible. Uh, OK, well, look, we have many beautiful women in the green room this I evening. Know. Let's give you a chance to try a couple. And one's a judge, anyway. They can be... Maybe give you an assessment of it. Well, look, let's... Do, do you want to start? Well, I, I don't... I, <laughs> I don't have any lines, but I was... When I was researching the show, I tweeted for people to... Give you tweet me lines, and I now keep an archive of them okay, okay. for just this eventuality. Okay. I mean, so, sorry, these, so... these are not mine. These are people... People have sent me these in. So, ladies, if you react just as if Stephen has come up to you in a, a party or a bar, and uh, this is the opening salvo, and let us know how this works. Who's this first one for, Stephen? Hello, ladies. Hi. 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 Hey, looking good. Saw you on the uh, X Factor, Nicole. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Jesus, that was enthusiastic. <laughs> <laughs> you know that I'm not actually hitting on you. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first one. <laughs> Nicole, here I am. What are your other two wishes? It's like, uh, it's like... Excuse me, who... wait, who are you? Oh. <laughs> it's a joke, it's a joke. Forget you, I'll talk to your be more beautiful friend in the middle. OK. Uh. Wow. okay this, is getting, this is getting tense. All right, this one's for What's he going to say to me? Naomi. Yes. Hey, Steve, Hi. how's it going? How you doing? The word of the week is legs. Let's go back to mine and spread the word. <laughs> Extremely, extremely vulgar. Oh, come on, that was dynamite! <laughs> that was killer stuff! <laughs> well, thank you, ladies. <laughs> but you do hear people do have these terrible... It's unbelievable, isn't it? It's amazing how many of them are <laughs> creepy. There was one guy sent me one that was, um... Here's 10p, call your mum and tell her the ransom is £50,000. <laughs> OK, uh, well, look, the show, as I said, the show is called uh, Hello, Ladies. It's on Wednesdays at 10. It's very funny. Oh, it's so. thank it's you. great thank fun you. having you here. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in saying thank you. Mr Stephen Murphy. Thank you. It was great. OK, after the break, I'm very excited. I will be joined by Naomi Campbell. We also have music from the fabulous Laura Mavula. Don't go away. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get my next guest out. She is, quite simply, one of the world's most famous supermodels. She doesn't normally do chat shows, so we're very excited she's here. Will you please go crazy for the stunning Naomi Campbell, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, look at Naomi, ladies and gentlemen. That's, that's what you call a dress, isn't it? So, no, no. should I sit or should I lay? Uh, well, <laughs> well, let's get to this straight away, because uh, Naomi's over here because she has a show on Sky... Is it on Sky Living? It's on yep. Sky Living, Monday Mondays at 9 o'clock. Called The Face, and this is you and two other very beautiful, successful models. Caroline Weinberg and Erin O'Connor. Okay. And you're mentoring young girls who want to be yes. models. Okay. We're mentoring young girls that want to be models. We're split up into um, teams of four, mm -hmm. and the thing is, also, it's not only the models who are competing with each other, the mentors are also competing with each other. So it does get very hairy. I'm very, very competitive. You do strike me as being a competitive person. And on the show, there are moments you are the one who seems to be taking it the most personally. I take it very personal when one of my girls is put out. Right. I do not like okay. to be have one of my girls eliminated. Yeah. I mean, well, who does? I've been working the longest and I think I've got the most experience to give. But I imagine, uh, of the girls there, the one who you wouldn't want uh, to get on the bad side of would be Naomi Campbell. No, my girls, I protect like a mother hen. Yeah. They're, they're never going to get on the bad side of me. No, I mean the other... I protect them from the other mentors. OK. Absolutely. Okay. And if the claws have to come out, they come out. Wow. Yeah. And when Naomi's claws come out... Yeah. What form does that take these days? It's, it's um, their claws. But I know real close. in the past there have been definite cat fight. There have been moments. I know you've had a little bit of help. You've had a little bit of management going on with. Oh please, uh, you know what? Certain you behavioural know what? I think, tics. I think I made the name anger management famous because no one had heard of it before you. I know, it doesn't actually. I, I, I didn't remember they did that film. I said Adam Sun, and I thought I did that first. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> um, it's really anger is an emotion, and. Um, there's things I had to deal with, like us all, well, at different times of our life. All of us get angry sometimes. Yes, we do. How we deal with it. Do you want us to see you like that? Or are you... Would you not well, rather people, people saw the softer I... side of you? You do see the softer side of me. Yeah. You see many sides of me But you seem to prefer episode. talking about the tougher side of yourself. Because I need to be... People don't think that I am like that. People don't think I'm disciplined. They think I was lazy and everything came easy. I don't think people think that about you. And I'm not. I'm unorganized. People think I can't drive. Can you imagine? Can you drive? Of course I can. I thought you couldn't. I can. Okay. <laughs> um... right, let's have a look at a clip of the face. And the girls, they'd been arguing beforehand, which you hadn't known about, had you? Your, uh, your yeah. girls had been arguing with each other. Waste of time arguing because we need that energy for them to put into their work. Okay. Okay. So... And this is when you find out and you kind of read them the riot act. This is Naomi in the face. You can smell more than that. You're 18 years old, for God's sake. 
Raquel, focus to the camera. Chin down, Raquel. Can it does not look the next. I have my career. You guys don't. You want what I have. And for me, it's a waste of my time. You're reading them the right act. They deserve the right act. Wow. They deserve and it. And do they respond to that? I found, personally, they did people... They wait people till next week, you'll see. I think people respond better normally to a kind of a kind and nurturing... Uh... No, I was kind of nurturing in the beginning, and they didn't listen. So then we have to step it up a notch. I don't want to waste time. Oh. You know you said you were tough on the girls and you're tough on the girls. Yeah. Was there anyone tough on you when you started out? When you, did you have a mentor figure like that? Or who did you look to for inspiration as well as for kind of seeing how it should be done? My mother was quite tough on me in the sense that she didn't want me to model in the first place. And she was very hard in telling me what could go wrong and what I might see. And What, she um, was worried about the scenes you might find yourself in then, or...? I think, you know what, you've got to let your bird fly the coop. You've and, got to let your kids grow up, yeah. Yeah, and so, you know, um, whatever, whatever I've done in my life and, you know, drugs, sex and rock and roll, it's, you know... You Presumably you've done... All of those. <laughs> and, and from the look of things, plenty of them. <laughs> you had a good time. You've enjoyed your life. I've enjoyed my life. Uh, but you would never go back there, even if it wasn't I'm an happy addiction where problem. I am today. Yeah. I live in the day. I stay in my day. And I'm happy and I'm doing the face. Were you th was it, were and you I'm an danger? executive producer and I don't want to go back. But you know what I find remarkable in a way is most people who I've met over the years, and I've known a lot of people mm -hmm. who have had periods of their life of abandon, of mm -hmm. kind of wildness, and they, you know, and they normally have fun. But most of them you see it on them. When you see it on them, you can see that you don't look like you've had. How did you survive? How did you stay in your line of work? How did you stay looking as good as you do? But having those. I think those everyone weird comes years. to their conclusion no matter what it is that you're addicted to. You can be addicted to work, you know what I mean? Everyone gets to... Cos it's, it's basically... All it is is an escapism. You're all, it's like you're escaping from something no matter what. Yeah. Working out too much is something else you're escaping from. So, sure. it's, for me, it's... I came to my realisation at 29 that I didn't like myself the way I was, and that was it. And so that's when you called a halt to that kind of behaviour? Yes. And never look back, or did you? Was it difficult to snap that pattern? No, it's not. It's every day is a different, new day. Every day is like I'm no perfect human being. I'm a work in progress, and every day it's like, wow, shit, I wish I could ever. No, you cannot. So it's just like, you know, I'm, I'm just living. That's it. Yeah. I'm just living, and I'm just breathing. You're just sort of funny. And I, I took off my patch today, so I didn't want to wear a patch on. So hold it. So you're tonight. still craving cigarettes sometimes? No, I've been wearing the patch because. I don't want to smoke. I want to try and kick it. It's like no, that's what, it's, an, it's admirable. I'm not joking. But I didn't. But you still, you still would be smoking, maybe, if you weren't. Um, I'm doing everything to try to not to. If you give up smoking, then that's it. Then you don't booze. Uh, you don't do drugs. Uh, you don't. Do you drink coffee? I bet you don't drink your coffee. I then. never have like coffee. I never drink coffee. Was coffee because so, I'm not. I've so what's going to be? I've been a tea drinker. Don't you worry. I've got plenty of things on your business. Okay. Well. <laughs> I'm worried about you, Nubby. How are you going to unwind after oh, hard don't days? Don't you worry. Uh, well, what are you going to do? To give us some details? No, I will not give okay, you details. Okay, look, imagine details. this. I know you've thought don't of this scenario. Don't even try. No, I mean, imagine, imagine you were lucky enough to be married to me, right? And I know you've thought about that. <laughs> and you come home after a hard day on the... You come home on a hard day on the catwalk and you slam the door and you've had a bad day. You go, oh, those bitches. And I go, what's wrong, darling? Yeah. How do we unwind together? Uh, maybe I should put on sexy lingerie. I'm not wearing any of that shit anymore. <laughs> You put it on or I put it on? I thought you wanted me to put it on. No, I don't want you to put it on. I don't want a cross-dresser boyfriend or husband. <laughs> Absolutely not. And something's not right with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in touch with my feminine side. Oh, That's really? <laughs> hey, uh, Naomi came in from Paris, I think. You, were in, I came, you came on I the came Eurostar. In. Yes, I did. And um, we were sending a car to pick you up. And what happened? OK, nothing bad. Don't get... Oh, I'm not defensive. Yes, I? you are. I'm and uh, <laughs> they said you might want to send an extra van for oh, Naomi's yeah. cases. <laughs> yeah. And you're only here for what, three or four days? Yeah, but I'm on wait route to Australia. So, for how six many weeks. cases do you travel with normally? Um, I've got four. I'm but a... they're deep. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so I guess because you are no, travelling no, through I'm always. Just, no, I'm going hot, cold, hot, cold. It's difficult. No, okay. Okay. Well, that's the menopause. That will be. I'm not. Uh, not yet. Oh God, no, no. Not yet. You're not for mean. many years yet. Jonathan, that's mean. I'm getting mean. the hot flushes. I'm always getting them. I haven't gotten them yet. Touch wood. But you can take vitamins now to prevent it. You can get a patch as well. You get a patch for it. Natural. Or, or a Gary Barlow album has the same effect. <laughs> I'll play the Gary Barlow album. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Years ago, I interviewed once before on a talk show a long time ago, and um, I remember the time thinking, OK, you know, and please don't take this the wrong way, but you, yeah. no one thought a model could have a career that lasted as long as yours back then. I mean, I don't think any models did. We're not supposed to. They say they give us 7 to 11 years. OK, so I assumed you were going to settle down and find a house and maybe start a family somewhere and do all that kind of stuff. Mm. And you've been in a number of relationships, but you haven't really settled down. I kind of did settle down, just not the right person. Um... This is my life. I'm happy. But people would find that not strange particularly, but, you know, you would think... I don't find it strange. Oh, but obviously you... I'm not settling for nothing that's not worth No, you've got to find the right yeah, person. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> but I think we all know there won't be a shortage of people asking. Let's skip to the next subject. <laughs> no, let's stick with this one. I don't want to... Jonathan, I'm not going to answer you. Well, I might keep asking, <laughs> may I? <be? laughs> do, you ever, do you ever make the first move with a guy? No. No, I'm not doing that. I'm not going over to a man. But I guys, won't. some guys must find you intimidating, I would have thought. I guess some do, then I never, I'm never going to meet them, am I? That's fair enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If they're not going to take the risk, they're not going to get the prize, are they, Naomi? They don't get the prize anyway. They have to a long time. Really? How, how long do you keep people waiting for? Let's change subjects. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted a rough ballpark figure. <laughs> look, look, Stephen Merchant is out there you know with a what notepad. I he he wants to know format. how long it's going to take him. Do you know what? <laughs> your format's absolutely brilliant now because I was saying back to I don't understand your format of your show. Why don't we just come on seven minutes each and then we're done? And now I realise that you get us here and you wind us down and down and down. <laughs> and then you try and get us when we think <laughs> they're comfortable now. Let's get this question in. <laughs> Yeah, and that's what you do. <laughs> okay, you got me. You got me, Naomi. Okay, and you're not giving it away. All right. Uh, if you think back on Naomi Campbell's career, I mean, obviously you, we've all seen thousands of images of you, but occasionally it's the things that weren't planned that I think stick in the head more. And there's the famous shot where you fell over, but it was kind of funny and it was sweet as well, and you were laughing at it. Um, but those shoes, did you ever walk in them successfully? Um. After that fall, I think I might have been at a shoot on them. I stood in them. I don't know if I walked in them. Okay, because look, we, we, we have them here. No, no, no! <laughs> These are... No! That's, that's, this is like showing Superman kryptonite. <laughs> <laughs> These are the actual shoes oh, you Oh, how are you, Shu? How are you? So what are you going to ask me, Jonathan? Well, I thought we might see if you want to catwalk them tonight. That is see so can... unfair to put me on a spot like this. <laughs> that is so wrong because of you. it might be Do nice you have a for pair? You. Have you got a pair? Of course well, I haven't what? got a pair what? of shoes like this. <laughs> well, don't you think if I'm going to do it, you should be doing it too to keep me company? I don't have... <laughs> okay. I think okay. what we'll do is, look, so you're not on your own out there, why don't I get everyone, yeah. everyone on the show, to come out and do their catwalk walk for us? Oh, that would be nice with okay. Nicole and Louis and Will Gary. Will you do it? Everyone... We'll... Guys, are you up to do this? If... Yeah. Come on, Louis. Yeah. Look, okay, Naomi's going to try the shoes for stage, Emma. So if Naomi wants to, let's go up and get the shoes on you, and then we'll come back in here. Let me give you the other one, otherwise you'll be like Cinderella. Let okay. me give you that. Thank you. Naomi Campbell, ladies and gentlemen, she'll be back in a minute. <laughs> All right, here we go. This is quite exciting. This is history in the making. We're going to see if Naomi can finally pull it off in those shoes, and we're also going to see everyone else do their very best model squad. Who's up first? It's Gary Barlow, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> no, the look. The look was gold. Gary Barlow, ladies and gentlemen. Next up, Nicole Schertzinger. Here she is. Catwalk ready, Nicole Schertzinger. OK, here we go. Alfie Bow. Give it, baby, come on. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, bold. Bold, bold. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hugh 
gentleman wouldn't have fallen over. <laughs> OK. Stephen Merchant. There he is. Big Stephen. Wow! But he was smiting. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the moment you're waiting for Naomi Campbell in those shoes. Come on, girl. You can do it. Fingers crossed. I just realised that was incredible. You did almost, I think you almost stumbled over there, didn't you? I did stumble. Wow. Oh, I just realised, I'm sorry, we didn't get to see uh, Louis. I'm sorry, let's have the music back on. Uh, Louis's got to come. Louis Walsh, ladies and gentlemen. Here he is. Ladies and gentlemen, the fabulous Naomi Campbell. <laughs> Thanks to all my guests tonight, of course. But next week I'll be joined by Britain's sexiest baker, Paul Hollywood. Funny man Steve Coogan will be here, as well as the latest screen Dracula, Jonathan Rhys Myers. And there'll be music from the most successful duo in UK pop history, the Pet Shop Boys, performing live right here. But now, to play us out this evening, performing Sing to the Moon, please welcome the fabulous Laura Mvula. <laughs> Shattered in a thousand pieces Weeping in the darkest night Hey there you Trying to stand upon your own two feet And stumbling through the sky hey, you When the lights go out And you're on your own How you gonna make it through till the morning song? Sing to the moon and the stars will shine over you, lead you to the other side. Sing to the moon and the stars will shine. to lay a burden down Hey there you Drowning in a helpless feeling Buried on the deeper ground Hey you When the lights go out it's a waiting game Ever gonna see a day when your world will change Sing to the moon. 